Coming up, I'm going to share the advanced ASO strategies that you should be utilizing in 2024. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? Happy New Year and welcome to 2024. And if you're new to this channel, well, you are in the right place. If you're trying to learn these strategies that will help you grow your app downloads and your revenues. I've been in this space since 2011, doing this full time to 2014. And I want to share with you all the different strategies that we are utilizing for the tiniest of apps and the biggest of apps. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, you want to focus on niche keywords. Look, the app store is not the app store. When I started in 2011, it is very crowded. And so you're going to have to find if you're not one of the big players with the big brand, you're going to have to find these niche keywords that these bigger brands may not even paying attention to. Now, I'm going to pause here for a little bit. I've worked with a lot of big brands. And what I've noticed from them is they think about the app business a little bit differently than what indies might be thinking about it. The big brands tend to have a funnel in place. They raise some money, so they need to do some marketing, which means they need to run some Facebook ads. They need to run a bunch of ads. They're not even paying attention to ASO. They could care less about ASO. They're just thinking about, let's spend some money to get some downloads, get that data, and then lower the cost per install, all that jazz. And also some of these bigger brands are gonna go after the most competitive, high traffic, high competition keywords. So let the big guys fight amongst themselves and we'll focus on these niche keywords. So let's get into it. I wanna give you some examples. Our motivational app right here, the keyword volumes that were ranking number one. Now I wanted to highlight this because mobile action saying the search traffic is 3724 for these two particular keywords, whereas App Radar is saying it's number five. I know that mobile action, especially with the AI craze, has way better traffic scores than any other tools, in my opinion right now. App Radar is still very good from a difficulty perspective, but mobile action is more accurate from a search traffic perspective. Same with that follow as well. And so as you can see, I discovered these new two keywords and we are number one for these keywords. This app was doing nothing for the longest time. So if you got an app out there and you're like struggling to make it work, really pay attention to keyword research and try to find the best keywords out there. And sometimes these new keywords, just like for my app, will pop up. And just like that, we went from getting no sales whatsoever for this particular app, boom, we hit over a thousand in September, in October. And we've done better since, but this is an older screenshot, but we're averaging about a thousand to $1,500 just with organic downloads for a $20 a year product. Okay. Didn't add new features, just change the keywords, the app title and all that stuff. And that led to the boom. All right. As you can see, we're getting about 2000 downloads roughly and all organically. I'm not spending any paid marketing. So this is the type of business I like to run. I don't have to worry about this. We're getting constant downloads for free and we're making money. All right, so let me give you some new data with a new Sleep Sounds app. Now, for me, what I'm doing is finding these niche keywords and then building an app versus thinking about the app idea and then finding the keywords, okay? So I knew these keywords had traffic. So I launched a new Sleep Sounds app in November. That very first month, we launched in November 5th time range, we were able to get roughly about $1,000, 933 to be exact. All right. In December, we're doing pretty decently around that same mark. Now, I'm obviously trying to grow this. Now, I think it has a potential to hit 10,000. Now, hopefully, I'll hit that in Q2 of next year. We've worked on the new keywords. I've tried different things. And now I'm like, okay, going after these other keywords and so forth. But there is a whole set of keywords that nobody's paying attention to that I'm paying attention to with this particular app. Okay. So if you think it's just for those small numbers, you're like, oh, Steve, that's $1,000. Ha, 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 ha. What about for bigger clients? I'm going to show you this real quick. All right. So this is one of our clients. They're making about $80,000 a month. And since we've been working together, they we started in roughly the middle of September. Since we've been working together, their keyword traffic has just gone up. As you can see, top one, we have 11 new keywords, 120 in the top 10, 262 in the top 30, 76 in the top 50. And then who, I don't really know what this means. I was like top 100. Does this mean that we got more over here and that's why we lost the top 100? I have no idea, but we lost some in top 100, which I don't really care about. Really the big number right here, top one is the big one that I have to pay attention to. Okay. And that's the same strategy we use for them. So I want to give you some data. Here's how roughly about the same amount of downloads are getting from app store search only. 
This is App Store search downloads. They're getting way more through other searches, but you can see since we've been working there in September, we've been able to grow their organic App Store search downloads. And I've used this strategy. If you don't believe me, somebody in the YouTube comments put this in here. He said, I literally tried this step-by-step -step strategy and I'll link up this video into the info up here, but you can see we showed you exactly how to find these niche keywords, what type of search traffic score you should go after and so forth. And that's enough. And he did this. I literally tried this step by step and it worked for my app. We went from zero to 5,000, two months. Thanks Steve for sharing your experience. Okay. That was a YouTube public comment right underneath that video that I'll link up. So focus on these niche keywords, especially if you're an indie developer out there. All right. Number two, in-app events. They are super important these days. Now I've been talking about them for about two years now, but here's some new data to share with you. Now I've been using in-app events for ASO purposes. So I tend to have keywords right here that I'm trying to focus in on when I'm putting these in-app events together. So it's more for ASO purposes and they do help. We saw one client get from two to one with just having that in-app event with the right titling. So number one, make sure the keywords you're going after are in the title of that in-app event and the short description or both descriptions, frankly, right? Now, pay attention to the dates, November 5th. Here's what we saw for this client on those say dates. You can see November 5th, and then I pulled it from December 4th. You can see the conversion rate for this app went up by 35%, despite the fact that we were getting less impressions, less downloads, less product page views. Now, don't pay attention to these all these numbers because I shared this on LinkedIn, and they're like, hey, what about why did everything else go down? We've seen this with other apps where everything went up and the conversion rate went up too. All right, this just happens to be the screenshot I have, but I've trust me when I tell you this, that for multiple apps, big and small, when we've had an in-app event, we've actually seen this conversion rate go up. And normally I do not pay attention to this number, but I was like, huh, interesting. This is a great way to bring users back into your app, show them new content. It's almost like, oh, there's something cool happening here. And that's why I'm loving in-app events. And so for a lot of our apps and a lot of our clients' apps, we're putting together an app event calendar for the remainder of 2024. Google Play has the same thing. Currently, it's only available for apps that have over 1 million downloads, but here's what we've seen with Google Play promotional content. That's what they're called, okay? Here's where they're displayed. You can see in the games home, so you can get featured, the store listing page right here, the events tab right here in this events tab. And then if you search for the search results, obviously super important, right? So we did this for one of our clients and we were able to get some leverage from an ASO perspective. They were already ranking pretty well for this primary keyword. We had an in-app event and started showing up down here. So it's just another way to maximize your impression share, so to speak. And it's low hanging fruit. Like all you really need are some graphics and some text. That's it. That's really, that's it. So it's a no brainer. It's low touch, high impact type of campaign. Number three, US localizations. I know this is a little bit dated, but I wanted to make sure we had this in 2024. The US app store indexes nine different localizations. That's 10 in total, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, good. All right. So that's 10, including the US English. You have these 10 different localizations. Now, obviously we've been utilizing the Spanish Mexico for a long time, but what I really want to point out here is what we're doing from our side is we're going back to number one. We're finding these niche keywords. All these niche keywords are in the title in these nine different localizations. They're in the title and they're in the subtitle. So we'll have nine, 10, 11, 15 different niche keywords and we'll put them all in the right places. So here's an example for one of our apps. You can see the English title and subtitle and then the Spanish Mexico title and subtitle. So in all these nine other localizations, even though it's Arabic, Russian, Spanish, Mexico, and Vietnamese, you want to put English keywords to help your US app store rankings. Now, obviously, if you guys are big in Brazil or you're big in Mexico, you might want to keep Spanish in there, but you can then start to utilize Vietnamese, for example, or French or Korean as another example as well. What we're doing right now is really utilizing the big three for us is obviously US English, Spanish, Mexico, and Vietnamese. Those are the ones that we're really utilizing. Now I'm on this note with localizations. What I'll also say is don't just focus on English speaking countries. 
we've worked with a few different apps, especially the indie ones out there. For those who are not in the US, like really pay attention to your home country. We work with a couple of different indie developers who've done three, four thousand dollars outside of the US. So in like Germany, in Russia, they'll do a lot of sales and revenues and downloads from those countries. And then they'll start paying attention to the US. So that's okay too. Don't just focus like on launch, be like, oh, it has to be US, it has to be English only. No, you know your market, you know your language. The space is probably less competitive in your home country. So focus on that home country first and then start thinking about the other countries as well. Even if you just get downloads, right? You can just start getting downloads from those and maybe not sales because the conversions might be low. I've talked about this and I talked about this in my sub club interview and people got a kick out of it. So I'm going to keep mentioning it. But number four, keyword installs or boosts. Now run at your own risk. I'm not promoting them. I'm not telling you you should do it. I'm just telling you a lot of people I've worked with, some bigger companies do do these keyword install campaigns to help boost their keyword rankings. And yes, they are still effective today, but run at your own risk. I'm neither telling you to do it or promoting it or advising you to do any of these campaigns. I'm just telling you they exist and that other people are doing it. Lastly, and something that I'm very, very fascinated about and very much focused on is Google web search. I'll give you two examples. The organic side. Now back to your niche keywords, right? I have a client that really called their app niche keyword app right in the app stores. You can see the number one for Google on desktop search. Now, when I search for niche keyword app, the number one on Google, the number one on Apple, there's 5,400 searches a month for this particular keyword. Not too bad. Now, I don't know what number you should be looking for, but I think 5,000 is a good enough number. Okay. Really 1,000 is good enough for me, but heck five, the more the merrier, right? So you can see that, but on mobile search, which most of the searches are happening on, on our phones, obviously, he's also number one right here. I've blocked out all the apps because I don't want to reveal this niche keyword. And when I look at his App Store Connect data, you can see he's getting roughly about 100 downloads a day just from Google. This is App Refer and this is Google. So you see Google and Google Chrome. Combine those two, they're roughly about a, over 100 downloads a day just from those two channels. So don't sleep on it. As long as there's traffic, people searching for blank app, niche keyword app, or just frankly niche keyword, you might get better results on Google. And we saw another friend, Rudy, who had over 200 downloads because he was number one for a keyword, getting 200 downloads a day from just Google, all right? So harder to hack. I'm trying to figure out the algorithm behind that, but I just wanted to point that out. This is one that you can control, SEM and PPC marketing. Now, one of my past guests, Martin from Podcast App, he shared this strategy, so I don't mind sharing this right here as well. He said, look, I was like, Martin, what's working for you guys? He's like, ASO, SEO, and SEM. And I was like, hmm, tell me a little bit more about SEM. He said, well, we're bidding on some keywords. So when people search for a podcast app, he's bidding on this term. But unlike a Google UAC campaign, they're then taking them to a website. And that website takes them to the app store. So it's not a Google UAC campaign. It's actually a Google search campaign where you can bid it's like an Apple search ads campaign, but on Google, right? And we've seen decent success on this for some of our clients. And I want to learn a little bit more. There might be ways to just bypass this entire landing page. So stay tuned for that. I don't have enough details, but what we have seen is sometimes the cost per click on Google is a lot cheaper than the cost per tap on Apple search ads. So it does give you another avenue for downloads that might actually be cheaper for app than Apple search ads. All right. I really like this campaign. I'll have more details. I'll probably create a course out of this once I have enough of a grasp on this particular campaign. All right, guys, if I miss anything, leave a comment below. Let me know what you're doing, what you're focused on from an ASO perspective in 2024. And if you're an indie out there and you found some success, well, reach out to me. We'd love to have you on the YouTube channel as well. All right, happy new year. Hopefully I'll see you in person in 2024. That's it. I'll see you on the next video.